Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for this week's Bible study and prayer meeting. Uh, last week we began our treasure hunt in Nehemiah um, and in just the first few verses we could see Jesus. Um, we could see Jesus in Nehemiah's condescension. Um, just like Jesus, Nehemiah was in the throne room at the right hand of the king, bearing his cup. Yet he went out of his way uh, to find out about his people, um, Israel, the chosen remnant. And on hearing the bad news that they had been attacked again um, and that the gates of Jerusalem had been burned to the ground, uh, we read in today's verses, um, in verse 4, uh, that Nehemiah went straight to God in prayer. Um, we see here uh, that he rid himself of all worldly distractions and uh, he fasted and he set aside a few days to pray for his people. And friends, this is a sign of a regenerate heart. This is the sign of a Christian, uh, that when bad times come, our first reaction is always to bring it to God, to forgo all of what the world offers and fall upon our knees and simply trust God to deal with it all. And this is something that every human being has a capacity to do. Because as the Bible says, each one of us are made in God's image. Which is why there is no such thing as an atheist. Just people who think they are atheist. Friends, I do not care who you are or what you believe today. In a crisis, you will be praying. There are no such things as atheists on a crashing plane. Everyone turns to God at some point in their lives when the chips are down. Uh, when we can't help ourselves any longer or when the world ceases to provide for us, we all come running back to God as if he is some kind of magic genie to help us. But friends, God knows the heart. And he only answers the prayers of those who love him. And as we can see here in these verses, Nehemiah's motives are pure, sincere and Christ-like. We see here in these verses that Nehemiah has Jesus in his heart. And we can see this because he petitions God as christ told us to. In verse 5 we read that Nehemiah acknowledges God's greatness. Um, he calls him awesome, God of heaven. And this echoes the first line of the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. In verse 6 Nehemiah asks uh, that in heaven God's ear will be attentive to his people on earth. And that's the second line of the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Nehemiah is also asking God here to, to provide for his people, Israel. That's the third line of the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? Give us today our daily bread. At the end of verse 6, and in verse 7, Nehemiah confesses the sins of his people. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Nehemiah then acknowledges God's commands uh, given to Moses, the life-giving laws of God, um, that if we follow, will lead us away from sin. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then in verse 10, Nehemiah ends his prayer by showcasing God's power, his strength, 
his mighty hand as he puts it um, and asks that God would be glorified, glorified through um, his servants' successes. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Friends, what we see here in this prayer from verse 5 to verse 11 in Nehemiah chapter 1 um, is Jesus' prayer on the mount. The prayer that he taught us to pray. It's the same pattern, the same model. What we see here in Nehemiah's prayer is a Christian heart. Someone who comes to God in their time of need, in a crisis, but not demanding that their needs be met. But rather pleading that the Lord of hosts would be glorified in their trials. Nehemiah puts God's name first before his own provision, before his own well-being. He lifts God, um, acknowledging um, his own imperfections before the Holy, Holy, Holy One. Nehemiah then reaffirms God's sovereignty and power over all things. He rejoices in God's law um, that brings life and he also rejoices in God's power of redemption uh, for those who fall. A redemption that each one of us can know today if we are in relationship with Jesus Christ. Friends, we are all living in very, very difficult times. I'm scared to put the TV on and watch the news. I fear what's next. The world has gone crazy. As Bible believing Christians, we are now but a remnant and the gates of Jerusalem seem to have been burnt to the ground. But what these verses in Nehemiah remind us of today is that no matter what fate befalls us, we always have God, whom in Christ's perfect sacrifice on the cross, we can come to at any time of our choosing and know his redeeming love for us and his sovereign greatness over all things. So let us come to God now and share in a time of prayer. Let us all come to God together in Christ Jesus's victory as cup bearers of the King and petition our Father in heaven in the mighty prayer that Christ taught us to say. And then we'll continue to pray together after. So let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever.